Okay, welcome back to Med Ed Animation. Again, this is my series trying to teach the super basics of using Synfig as an animation program because it's free and is very powerful, but is a little daunting when you first open it up and there's so many buttons. So if you haven't already, check out the video that kind of nicely precedes this, which is just how to use the spline tool to make basic shapes. I'm posting that video as well, I think, by the time this one is up. So. Um, so in this one, I'm going to make a shape and then show you how to change things over time. So we're going to actually animate now. So, okay, first let's just make a new shape with a spline tool. So to review from last time, I picked the spline tool here. I want to make a region with an outline. So I'm selecting both of these. Um, it's going to have a nice thick brush size on the outline. And this is a boring color. I guess, yeah, it'll be green with a black outline. Bam. All right, and I'm going to make it look like a, um, let's see, we'll make it look like a little, um, what is that, like a euglena? I like those little like algae things, the little tail. Bloop. You can make a simpler shape too. I'm just doing it to be annoying. All right, do they have a little mouth thing there? Cool, and then annoyingly, I'm going to right click and hit loop spline and then select to get off of it, and bam, there's our there's our happy little protist. Okay, and as a reminder, with the select tool, I can select it, I can click, I can choose the outline layer and the region layer, I can move it around and the two things move together, I can move any point along here and undo it with Control Z, um, and any time I work, I'm hitting Control S all the time, so make sure you have this in a saved file as you work. Okay, so hopefully from the last video, you know that you can change any of these parameters. You know, by clicking this, I can make it, uh, I can change its color, by the way. I didn't explicitly say that last time. Let's make it a nice cyan color. Mm. Okay, and then uh, I can make it transparent, 0 0.5. Look, it's clear. Now it's full again. Um, I can uh, select the outline and feather it to make it more like all blurry kind of. See that? Put it back at zero because that's annoying. Um, yeah, and uh, blah, blah, blah. I think that's all I wanted to show you there. Great. So now that you know that you can modify all these things in space, just like you could in a normal drawing program, now we're going to turn it into animation. Um, so actually, well, no, I'll keep it like this. Okay, so the very important button that you're gonna become very friendly with is this little green humanoid here. And when you click it, it turns red. And to make sure you know, because this is so important, there's a red box around here. And look, click it again, gone. Click it again, back, gone, back. So this is switching between sort of composite mode or drawing mode with animate mode when it's red and in motion. So, once it's in motion, now when you change any of those parameters we talked about, the position of a point in space, the origin or location of the entire object, the color, the transparency, the feathering, anything you change, the computer's going to think that you're just changing it for that point in time, and it's going to think that you want to get there from some, some previous value. So what do I mean by this? So on the bottom here is a timeline. And by the way, if you don't see these things, make sure you go to Window and Workspace. I, I'm using Default. There's one called Compositing where it's just the drawing tools and Animating is one with just the timeline kind of stuff. Anyway, but I'm in the default. So there's this timeline at the bottom. If I switch from the sort of parameters box to this key, it's the image is a little messed up because again, a little bit of a glitchy program. But this is a, just trust me that that's a blown up picture of a key. And these are our keyframes. And a keyframe, in animation just refers to like an anchor point. It's like an important point of reference. So in traditional animating, the like uh, it would sometimes be like the master animator would draw these important keyframes, the important poses that the character gets to, and then the little interns or minions would kind of draw the little frames in between. So as a relic of that, the keyframes in vector animation are sort of the key anchor points um, between which change can happen. So it's hard to see, I'll move it even so you can kind of see, but this carrot here shows that there was a keyframe, and now it's at four, uh, the fourth frame, but I'm gonna put it back at the zero frame. And frame, oh, I'm just gonna actually select it here to put it back. You don't have to do that. 
So it should default to a keyframe at time zero. If not, you could add a go to frame zero and add a uh, hit the plus sign and add a frame. Um, and you can even label this. So I can describe my first keyframe as start. And let's say a keyframe 24. I could either click to the, that point or I can just fill in where I want to go here. Take me to keyframe 24. And then you hit the plus sign, add a keyframe, and we'll call this end. So now the idea is that whatever you want to happen to this character uh, is going to start at, the, at frame zero and end at frame 24. And because it's vector animation, it's not gonna be like a flip book of you drawing the picture 24 times. It's gonna be a smooth transition between those two points of whatever characteristic you're modifying. So I'm speaking a little abstractly. Let me just show you an example. So right now, zero is how we drew it. This is, this is what our Ugolina looks like at time zero. And right now, if I toggle, if I click to the next keyframe with this button, see, next keyframe, it still looks the same because I haven't changed anything. But because I'm in animate mode, if I go to frame 24, and let's say I just stretch out the tail. I'm just taking this one point. And so what do you think is gonna happen over this period of time? Well, if I go back to time zero, look, the tail's how it originally was because it's still anchored to that keyframe. But if I click through here and I scrub through the frames, look, every frame bigger and or longer and longer until you get to the final keyframe. And then after that, no more change because there's no other instructions or point of reference after that. Oops. And it spontaneously quit. <laughs> oh man. So this is uh this is part of the, the fun of Synfig, so always save your work. Uh, oh look, so we got to the point where I made a keyframe but I hadn't changed it. Okay, so let me just redo that last step real quick. It's good planned redundancy anyway. Um, so I'm gonna go to animate mode, right? Because when, when Synfig closes itself and reopens, it will be in non-animate mode. So turn on animation mode and we'll click our creature again. And I, again, will tell it at time 24. Uh, here, I'm gonna turn off these things. At time 24, I want you to stretch out your tail for me. And now I'm gonna hit save, control S. And look, now between zero 24 we okay anyway sorry for those interruptions <laughs> Ooh, that's embarrassing for the program and not for me i mean it's not my fault anyway don't worry it's not that bad i think synfig just doesn't like when i scrub through and click a lot like that and uh and also because i'm also like doing the screen recording and stuff i think it's just taking more computer computer power so anyway so my point is do you see how when animate mode is on I can tell it to change over time. And so hopefully that's intuitive. Like, yes, it's animation. So between time zero and frame 24, I want that to move. What else can I do? Over, I can also say, okay, by keyframe 24, I want you to wiggle that tail and I want you to move this way. Great. Now let's see it. I hit play and boop, boom. So you can see that it, it's moving across that timeline. Hit save. But remember, the less intuitive parameters can also be changed over time. So what if you wanted something to, to uh, vanish by a certain time? Okay, so at time zero, this thing has an amount of 1.0. It's fully opaque. But I want to say, okay, by time 24, I want you to become transparent, zero. And now look, it starts here and gradually gets clear. So you get the idea? So basically the general idea of this animation program is it turns your artwork into math <laughs> and then says, over time, change the numbers. And so I think that's why Synfig is really fun because you can be an artist who has to challenge yourself with the math, kind of mathematical side of it, or you can be more of a scientist who's less confident as an artist and take advantage of some of the automation of it um, and unleash your creative side. So I think it's a nice melding of the two kind of brain hemispheres, if you will, um, and that's why I think it's fun. Um, the other thing I'll mention, because in reality, it's something I do almost always with this kind of shape. Um, well, first of all, I'm actually going to, oh, let me tell you a couple things. One is that you might notice these diamonds appearing. And for a while I like was working in this program and just ignored these. And I was like, what is going on? 
Um, but these all represent, they line up with the parameter here. So like if I want, like this tells me that there's changes happening in this parameter amount. And right, so that's the amount zero, amount one going to amount zero. Um, so you can move those manually actually. Let's say I wanted it to become fully transparent by the time it gets to like frame 12. Well, I can take this little uh, waypoint as they're called from the keyframe and actually move it up here. And now it's already zero. So now, look, it's fully opaque and watch this amount number go down if you're more of the math type and not the artist type. So the amount is going down, 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 zero. And then it just stays zero. All right, so I'm gonna put that back. The other nice thing about this to keep in mind is um, you can delete things. So let's say I animated the tail shape, the movement, and the color, I mean the amount, but I regret the amount part. You can just, um, oops, you can just, I think, option click. Let me try. Yeah, option click, and it deletes just that waypoint. So you can delete both of those, and now it's as if you never animated the amount, but you still animated the tail shape and the motion. So again, just a lot of freedom and a lot of customizability to get as simple or as complex as you want um, and make things happen sooner or later by moving these individual waypoints. Okay, sorry. So after that, the thing I was gonna say from a practical standpoint that I do almost always really, you know, you're seeing me modify a lot of this, these specific parameters, like just in the um, region or just in the outline. And it's nice because they're linked as we talked about, right? Um, but a lot of the time I actually group these. So I select both of these and I hit this folder button to just put them in a folder together, a folder or a group. And I'll call this Ublina. Um, and this gives you some other additional tools. So I'm actually going to turn off animate mode for a moment so that I don't confuse myself or you. And you might recognize one or two of these. So the green dot is going to do what? What do you think? It's gonna move the origin just like before. It's like a transformation. You're offsetting the location. That's what this is changing down here. This is giving me like an X and a Y axis coordinates on the field, right? So I can move it around wherever. And, and whatever I do to this folder layer or this group layer does not affect what I animated in there. So for example, I could use this group layer to move this whole thing up here. And when I play the animation, it's still going to do uh, the things I told it to animate, like the tail and the movement, but within the modification I made to the parent layer of the group. Okay. Similarly, if I use this scale button here and make the whole thing smaller, make it a little Euglena, uh, look, and then I go back and forth here. I'm going to save uh, before it freezes. It also still animates the tail and the movement, uh, but the whole thing is just on a smaller scale. The other things here are nice too. Uh, blue is a rotate, so you can rotate things and then have them still do what you told them inside. It's starting to look more like a squid. Uh, red is sort of like a skew, so it's it kind of like, instead of rotating, it kind of slants it like that. Um, sometimes occasionally useful. Um, and then these are just scaling in the horizontal or vertical direction. So that's, so that's the modifications of the group layer. And, and this opens up so many other possibilities, right? Because you know how before, like if I tried to make the whole thing transparent, it only made the region transparent or only the outline transparent. Well, when you have the group selected, I could just make the whole thing 0 0.5 and bam, the whole thing's transparent together. So a lot of the time when I'm just doing simple movements, like making this guy swim, I might just use the group layer uh, because then it's just easier to think about everything as one bundle. And you can imagine once we start making more complicated things like, let's say I gave this thing a little eyeball or something, I could put that all in one big group and move it all together as one animal or character. Okay, so let me just add a, a, a movement over, um, over the timeline with the group layer just to show you. So if I add, so I've shrunken it down off of animate mode while it's green, so that means it's gonna stay shrunken throughout the timeline, right? That's not something that's being animated. Um, but let's say I want the movement across the screen um, to be animated. So I'm gonna turn on animate mode. I'm at frame zero and I want it, and I'm gonna put it here. And see right now it auto added it at 24 to be where I started out. But now I'm gonna make 24 be like way over here. 
right? So now if I go back to the beginning, what do you think is going to happen? Well, it's going to go from point A to point B, swimming across, but also still animating the tail and the other movement from before. And by the way, if I want this to move slower or take more time, I can just say, hey, you need to require more frames or time to do the same task. So let's make this keyframe, uh, instead of 24, we'll make it like 100. Now when I hit play, it's a much slower process. Okay. And the other thing is there, you'll get a sense eventually for why, when you want to use a uh, keyframe for a big movement versus when you just want little random movements without. But if you wanted, you can randomly add other movements anywhere along this timeline, even without adding another keyframe. So let's say I want this guy to wiggle, right? So I'm going to use the rotate, this blue button to rotate my group layer. Well, I can just go every couple frames and rotate them. Then I can go back here and I can rotate them. I could go here and rotate them. And rotate. And I could even now watch this. So these waypoints, if I go back to these descriptors, look, this is specifically talking about angle, which is the blue button. So just like anything else in this program, I can use copy and paste. So instead of having to click rotate, 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 if I want the identical amount of rotation up and down, I can just alternate these two rotations. So watch, if I right click angle, this angle parameter where it was rotated, because back here, look, it was rotated the other way. So if I go to my next place and I right click and I hit duplicate, boom, now it's rotated again. Go a little further and duplicate this one, duplicate. And so these are the, oops. These are the kinds of things that can just speed up your efficiency. Another gl glitch of Synfig is that sometimes the, <laughs> the menu doesn't appear over the mouse. So just, just kind of move it around until it goes. Yeah. And look at that. So now, um, instead of hitting play on the timeline, I'm going to actually go up here and hit this little movie cam, uh, movie projector symbol, which is actually the preview um, window. I'm going to set the quality to like 0.4 so it loads quickly. And let's set the frame rate to something fast like 20 to make it nice and smooth and hit preview. And sorry, mine's on another window. I'm just bringing it over. And just set this to fit. That's just how big your screen is so you can see. Make it nice and big. And we'll see our creation. Whee! So, and this is nice. So once you preview, this won't crash the system. Like this, the preview mode doesn't... Um, like you can scroll through this and it won't cause any trouble to the program. So that's really nice, right? Because I can toggle, like if I'm loading something and I wanna see if an effect is working or not, before I load like a high quality thing, I can just go to preview, let me show you, and I could set the quality really low. The thing loads really quickly, even if it's complicated. And I could toggle through and say, oh, right at frame 62, I don't like how that looks. So I'm gonna change whatever, you know? So, um, so th that's how you use preview just to check your work. So yeah, so to review, the things we did is we um, we told we made two keyframes at times zero and twenty-four. We animated a specific point on the shape that we made with our spline tool. We also uh, used the origin of that region to have it sort of descend slightly um, as it goes. Then we made a group uh, with the um, region and the line in it, and using that group layer, we told it to go from kind of one side of the screen to the other over the timeline. Um, also, while animate mode was off, we scaled it down so it was nice and small. And then we used that angle tool and created all our intermediate points. Um, and we learned how to copy and paste those waypoints so that we can have symmetric or identical sort of actions happening over the timeline if we want it to look precise or save time. So hopefully this helped. Um, I covered a lot of ground, so you um, definitely might need to watch this a couple times to get a sense of all the nuances of what I said there. And hopefully your computer crashed less than mine did during uh, during this. Um, and yeah, I think you know if you get these fundamentals from this video and the one before it, there's so much here that the rest will really pay off. You know, if you understand these fundamentals, you'll understand the general concept of how this how synfig should be used. And, uh, and the rest will be surprisingly um, fast learning. So good luck.